to encourage all of you in the church who would like to be a part, whether you're online community or here in person, who would like to be a part of it, to please fill out a registration form. We have them in the foyer, or else you can actually go online and do it or phone the office, and Christy will do it for you. We're trying to get them all done this week, if possible. So heads up. Please, if you would like to be a part of it, we're going to be at Topeka High this year. Sign up. Now, Christy isn't here today, and she's quarantining out of caution for a possible COVID exposure. So she's normally the person that if you have any difficulties or you have anything on the online problems that you would call. But today, because Christy isn't there, Robert is going to be the one who you will call. His phone number is, I'm going to give you a little break here so you can get something to write with, where you can text him is 785-210-5918. If you have access to our church directory, it can also be found there. All right? And if you didn't have time enough to get a pen or pencil, you can actually text, I mean, on the chat, you can let our moderator know and they will text Robert and get him any messages that we might need to know. Now, the numbers keep going down as far as COVID. And for that, we are grateful. I am especially grateful because that means next week we get to start kids worship up again which is for pre-K through sixth grade, and it takes place during service time. We dismiss the children right after worship, and we go to the gym. Another thing we will be doing is we are going to have our Easter egg hunt. So it will be Easter after our Easter service, and it will be outside, weather permitting. If not, we'll do it in the gym like we did for our October ones. But it's called the Hip Hop Easter Egg Hunt. We have made out little invitations. They are on the welcome table and on the kids' table. And you are well, we encourage you to take one and to give to someone in your neighborhood or someone in your family you might like to invite. And we will put new ones out each week. So just think about somebody you could invite. We are also collecting candy. The basket's there. Some people already brought candy this morning. So if you'd like to help us that way, we would be grateful. All right. We also have our family room set up now. And once again, with the technology, uh, like I said, we are doing so many different things with new cameras, new wiring, new sound. So if you um, do not feel comfortable yet, you want to be part of the service here in the church, but you don't feel comfortable yet coming into the sanctuary, the family room is available. We have it all set up. I went in this morning, and it was working wonderfully. So we want to let you know that is available also. And I actually think I'm looking around. Nobody's raising their hand. That covers all of our announcements this morning. But this, is, this now comes one of my, if not my favorite time, and that is prayer time. And this week, we're going to be praying once again for Ken and Ann as they continue to go with the test and the results and with, I believe, you know, just the healing that is taking place within them and him in particular. So if you would please just join me for prayer. Father God, we come to you this beautiful day. Many would look out the rain and say, beautiful, but God, every time I see the rain, I see you bringing new life, and I see you washing things clean. And for that, for that, I praise you, God. I praise you for each and every person in our church and in our community that have been helping one another during this time. This has been a season of one another's, caring for one another's, sharing with one another's, giving to one another's. And for that, we are so grateful, God. We thank you, God, that you are our Father who loves us, who keeps us close to your heart, 
And God, we know that right now, Ken and Ann, are, you are holding them safe in the palm of your hand. Our prayers are surrounding them, and we uplift them. And God, we are so thankful that you are Jehovah Rapha, our God, who heals not only bodies, but our spirits also. We thank you for all the unspoken prayers also. We know there are many out there who are going through things at this time and had needs, and we know, God, that you know each and every one. And we know that you are working in the midst of their lives and the circumstances, even as we gather this morning. And for that, we are grateful. And we can say with confidence that your will will be done according to your word for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Real quick, before our worship team gets up here, uh, we're going to, I forgot to have a, Jeremy and Robert play the, a video that Christy did. Christy was going to give the announcement today, but yeah, that, w that was all my fault, Susan. We're going to have uh, Christy speak and talk to us about Cheerfest, then we're going to get up and worship together. Good morning, Cornerstone family. As Pastor Susan shared with you last week, ShareFest is coming up April 24th. This year we will be serving at Topeka High School from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. We must sign up this week to ensure that we can all serve together at the same location. Volunteers must be 12 years or older and we must register to volunteer. If you are online and would like to participate, please indicate so in the chat and we will get a registration form out to you. If you are joining us in person today, registration forms are, are available on the table as you walk in the door. Shirts will be provided to you at no cost if you indicate that you need one on your registration form. For those that are, are unfamiliar with what ShareFest is, ShareFest is an organization that partners with 20 plus churches and the 501 school district to become one church with no strings attached in our community for one day. ShareFest projects this year will be outdoors due to COVID. Projects include trimming, mulching, raking, planting, and painting. Following the morning's activity, there will be a celebration at the Evergy Plaza Center downtown. This includes food trucks, fun, worship, and fellowship. If you think that you'll be joining us for this, please indicate so that on your registration form so we can anticipate how many will be joining us. I hope to see you all there. Have a great day. Good morning, everybody. If you want to stand with us for a time of first praise and worship, that would be great. Let's get excited. we got a real fast one to start with as we sing My Lighthouse. All right. I guess i got to play it fast now. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, it won't walk out. Your great love will you are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go, in the questions you do will hold, your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore. Shore. I won't 
feel what tomorrow brings with each morning i'll rise and sing my god's love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness I will follow you, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Fire before us. You're the brightest, you would lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest, you would lead us through the storms. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. trust the promise you will carry me safe to shore safe to shore safe to shore safe to shore shore. all right good job everybody love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay Your 
goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. This next one's the new one we did last week. So if you heard it, sing along. If you're learning it, feel free to join with us. darkness let me shine by and may your love cause us to open up cause us to open up our hearts may your light cause us to shine so bright that we bring to shine so bright that we bring hope into the dark. Strength in our weakness, 
Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
Before I start today, I want to give a special shout out to our worship team members, our tech crew. Uh, This is the least fun Sunday to get here uh, early. It's the day we all have to spring forward, right? So thank you, tech crew. Thank you, worship team. Yeah, they deserve a hand. They really do. Thank you. We I, and an old uh, my my old pastor or my old worship team leader actually, uh, and worship pastor. He used to bring uh, donuts or uh, a Starbucks drink for everybody. I'm I am sorry I have failed you. We'll talk next year. But, uh, but you deserve it. Thank you all. You're, you are a blessing to our community. Uh, you, you may or may not know this about me, but I am somebody who is pretty afraid of heights. Have I talked about that here before? Being afraid of heights? No? Seeing some shaken heads? I, I am somebody who is pretty afraid of heights. Uh, even now, I am not super excited about going anywhere where there is a large... Journey to the bottom, that, that does not excite me. I, I think of the last time I went to the Grand Canyon, I was there for about five minutes, and it is a beautiful, beautiful place, but I was there for about five minutes looking over, and I started to wonder, so, so where's lunch? Where are we going for lunch? It's not here, right? We're going back to a safer place. Yes, good. And, and I've been afraid of heights my whole life, and what's really awkward is I love climbing. I really do. I enjoy climbing. I enjoy getting there, but once, once I'm over 10 feet off the ground, the climbing is fine, but looking down is utterly terrifying. And my family goes to a lake. We go to a place called Lake Ten Killer. A couple of our youth have been there. Jesse, uh, uh, Noah, were you hanging out with us there? You, don't, you didn't get to go to Ten Killer. That was the first year I was here. Uh, but but Lake Tinkiller is this beautiful place, and it has it has the cliffs. Jesse's nodding her head. Uh, the cliffs is where we always always used to hang out because it was this beautiful swimming hole. It was this little cove. Uh, boats would go by. Your boat wouldn't rock. It was glorious, and there was this little eight to ten foot tall cliff we called the Kids Cliff, and you could jump off it, and it was fine. But then there was the big one. It was this 20-foot tall cliff. And I remember distinctly, I was nine years old, uh, somewhere around there, the, the time when I went off the big cliff for the first time. And I climbed up there because my daredevil cousin, Ryan, beat me to it. He had no fear. And he climbed up there, and I wanted to follow him, so I got up there, and then I looked over, and that was it. I, I sat down. Ryan jumped off twice before I got the courage to to even attempt it. But what I remember most is my mom and dad down below. Mom was in the boat. She she told me, hey, I've got a life jacket. I I had a life jacket on too, don't worry. But I've I've got something I can throw your way. And, And my dad, I remember he was just kind of treading water at the bottom of the cliff, out of the way, but there there if I needed him. And I knew when they finally talked me into it, I I took that jump. It was more of a slight fall forward. I couldn't will my body to push. But but I fell forward and I, I jumped off the cliff. But I knew that I could depend on them because they were they were there for me. I could depend on them that even if I was going to fall off and, you know, fall to my doom, which is what nine-year-old me thought, that that they would be there and that they could help out. Well, we are in our, our... Uh, talking about us depending on Jesus, being tied to God, depending on God for, for all that we have. And today, we're going to take a look at Daniel 3. I'm going to invite you to turn there in your Bibles, on your phones, however you would like to access the Scripture. And we're going to see three dependents on God, three people who depended on God. And we're going to start off, actually, by talking about a construction project. 
uh, construction project here. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide and set it on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Uh, there, there are a few things with, uh, with this construction project. Uh, first off, golden statues are bad. In the Bible, golden statues are bad. The, you've got this, and you've got the golden calf, right? Uh, I, I was racking my brain for others. I think somewhere there's something about a seraphim being a golden statue in the temple, but I, I was looking for it, and I couldn't quite pick it up. But, but this and the golden calf, they're bad ideas, don't, don't go there. The Israelites are actually specifically told not to even attempt to make a statue of God, uh, much less a golden one, because, they didn't, because God didn't want people worshiping an image. He didn't want them worshiping, you know, this constructed thing. He wanted the people of Israel to worship Him. So golden statues are bad in the Bible. Secondly, it's very weird, I, I've left this up, because this is the height and width. We're, we're given the specific measurements. This is to scale. I put their squares, one square wide, nine squares tall. That's, that is to scale. And so if this was a statue of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, I would have to say props to his statue designer. Really knows how to slim a sovereign up, right? I don't, I don't know many of us that, we, most of us want to be taller and skinnier. That's, that's kind of what we all desire, or at least what I desire a little bit. But, uh, but props to his statue designer. I don't think that's humanly possible, but good job there. But, but, but the ultimate story is Nebuchadnezzar wants people to worship this statue. Nebuchadnezzar wants people to worship here. Uh, and any time that the instruments sound, we're told in Daniel 3, any time the instruments sound, you're supposed to bow down and worship the statue. And there are some people that don't. So we're going to be taking a look at the story of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azira. You thought I was going to talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, didn't you? Yeah? Yeah, you thought I was, I'm not talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I, I guess I kind of am, because those names are actually the names that Babylon gave to them. The, the, the Babylonian Empire, those were their prisoner of war names. And, and so, even though Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah don't rhyme like we're all kind of used to, I'm going to use those names instead of the, the ones that the... Uh, that that they were given by the people who took them prisoners of war. But, but Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah did not bow to the golden statue. They stood firm. They said, no, we're not going to worship that. That's not right. We worship God alone. And they got in trouble for it. People noticed. People, people reported them. In, in the lead-up to this story, these three men have actually been given uh, some responsibility in the kingdom uh, or in the province of Babylon. They, they had received positions of, uh, of uh, influence and, and power, even though they were captives. I just want to point out, gaining influence, gaining power, it just seems like it tends to make people seek your downfall, doesn't it? If somebody gets more influence in the PTA versus, you know, the people that are on my side or more influence uh, here or there, it's just one of those interesting things, and it is a major temptation for all of humankind. Influence and power, we, we seem to all want it. What's really interesting is these three men actually didn't seek it out. Uh, they were given these positions by the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, because Daniel, who this book is named after, spoke up for them. Daniel had, uh, had done a service for the king, and so Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had uh, given them these positions of influence. Even, even the ability to influence the capital of the empire that took them captive. Think about that. Even the enemy 
nation that took over Israel, they were in positions of influence to help that community. But they would not bow down to the idol of the king. And so he, uh, he summoned them and he, he asked them to worship this idol. It got in front of them and said, you will worship this idol. And that just wasn't on the negotiating table for, for very long. Uh, listen to what they said. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace... The God whom we serve will, is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. That's pretty aggressive. I'm reading those your majesties as... A, as reminders that they, they are serving a higher power than him. But, but listen to what they said. Even if God doesn't rescue us, we want to make it clear we're never going to serve your gods. We're never going to worship at your idol. They stood strong and they didn't break. They knew something was coming. They, they, they knew that they could be thrown into the furnace, but they said, even if God doesn't rescue us, We're still going to do this. We are still content with our choice just to let you know, your majesty. And so King Nebuchadnezzar was, he was a little bit ticked off. And so he said this, Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage and he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. And he orders them to be thrown in for not having the gall to not worship the statue that he sees or that he made. So we're going to read the next section all together because this this text is beautiful. Daniel 3, 24 through 29. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Jeremy, if you could could, uh, flip to the next slide there when it's time. Actually, never mind. I have to read off that because I didn't bring my Bible up with me. Shame on me, a pastor not bringing his Bible. It's it's a long road back. Baby steps, right? Baby steps getting back together. Anyways, Daniel 3, 24 through 29. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb and their houses will be turned to heaps of rubble. There is no other god who can rescue like this. That's an astounding switch to the story. Uh, it's, it's incredible that they were thrown into this furnace, bound and facing certain doom, and then in the next moment, they're walking around with a guest in there, with someone who was not there. Uh, 
some people have said that this sighting is a sighting of Jesus in the Old Testament, that Jesus came and was with them. Other people have said this was a, a, what's called a messenger, an angelos, an angel uh, that, that God sent. Ultimately, I don't know that I care one way or the other because what this means is that God stepped in and saved them. That's what this means. God stepped in and saved. God showed up. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah depended on God and he showed up. But what is incredible and convicting to me is is not this moment of God saving them. It's that they weren't certain he was going to show up, but they did what they did anyways. They weren't sure that God was going to save them. They said, God might not save us, but we're still going to do the, Jesus, or the God-oriented thing anyways. They were depending on God, and it wasn't just for one instance. It wasn't just for one moment in time. They were depending on God throughout the entire story, throughout the book of Daniel. Uh, In chapter 1, they have been captured as prisoners of war, and they're depending on God. They're praying, they're studying to increase their knowledge and their capabilities. They're eating right, they're eating what they think God wants them to eat, and there's actually a little challenge in the first chapter, uh, that people who ate whatever the king gave them versus these three and Daniel, uh, and there's this challenge, and they were doing what they thought God wanted them to do the whole time. They were depending on God, and because they were depending on God, they got to the point where they defied the king because of their dependence on God. It wasn't they, they did this thing and defied King Nebuchadnezzar and then were like, oh, I better flip the switch and depend on God here real quick. That wasn't what happened. They were depending on God and because of that dependence, they got into this situation and because of their dependence on God, in this case, God saved, God rescued Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah depended on God well before they got near the fiery furnace or even the gaudy statue. Depending on God is not something that we can or should flip on and off. It's not something that we, you know, we we start doing it when it gets really hard and we've got this specific situation. And once that is over and and we feel like we've depended on God and God's helped us, you know, we, we back off it and let it fade to the background. If these three men did that, we would not be hearing this story about them because they were consistently depending on God. And when something came up, they weren't moved or shaken because their lives were already oriented towards God and depending on Him for their very being. We, we think of these three men as heroes of the faith, right? They're, they're heroes of the faith. They, they stood up for God and, and for what is right. But they, they made the hard choice. But I, I'm not convinced this choice was... It was easy and it was hard. It was hard because they knew the consequences. But it was easy because their lives of depending on God, they knew the right call. They knew what they needed to do. Whether they were burned alive and going to meet their maker, or whether God would show up to save, either way their dependence on God showed the path forward. Because they couldn't do it on their own. Three prisoners of war standing up to a king defiant in the face of certain death. Uh, maybe, Maybe some of you guys could. I don't know that I'm that brave. If I'm just considering me, my human nature, by myself, I don't know if I'm that brave. But they weren't by themselves. They weren't alone. They were joined in the fire by that fourth figure. And so are we. We have access to God if we depend on Him. Their dependence on God made them long 
not alone. And that goes for us too. We are not meant to live life alone. And I'm not talking about marriage. Uh, I'm not talking about us as human beings being designed for community. We are designed for community. That is true. But we're not meant to do life alone. We're meant to do life connected with our Lord. Uh, The best life we can live is when we are connected to God, depending on God, when we recognize that God is our patron and that we are his dependents, that that God, if there is some cosmic tax form, that God can claim us as dependents, the entire universe as dependents on God. I don't know if he fills out cosmic tax forms. My guess is he's got better things to do. But our lives will go better when we recognize that dependency for us. I'm going to offer up one one tip that I found useful in my personal spiritual journey that if you are someone who is diving into this, that might be useful. Uh, I think I find that things tend to go bad when it's just been freezing making the decision. I know I'm talking about myself in third person. It won't be for very long. But, but when Ben Friesen is the only person involved, the only entity involved in making a decision, you know, I, I'm okay. I can, I can sometimes bat 50-50. That's all right. But things go infinitely better in big decisions, in life decisions, when I'm depending on God and asking God, help me. Because then if I'm asking God, my, my prideful, sinful self doesn't get in the way I invite God into that process and I depend on him and he can show me what God wants things to be like. And so my challenge to you this week is to take a step back. Uh, when, when you are faced with a decision, and I'm not talking about do I go to McDonald's or Sonic. Uh, for me, McDonald's breakfast, Sonic lunch, their burgers. I'm going to get one today, Caitlin, I just decided. But... Uh, I'm, I'm going to. I really like them. Sonic Burgers, they give, they give me enough veggies to make me think that I'm making an okay choice even when I get the, uh, the double meat patties. But, but I'm not talking about those decisions. I'm talking about the, the larger decisions, the, hey, should I move here? This opportunity came up at work, but I'm not sure what should I do. My neighbor just yelled at me, I'm not sure how to respond. Those moments in our lives, just take a step back, even as little as a few seconds, but just step back and ask God, help me. Help me, Holy Spirit, prompt me for what you want me to do. Be dependent, not on yourself, but on God. Uh, Danny, would you come forward here? Uh, I'm going to have Danny come on up and uh, just invite her. Uh, we're going to, she's going to play, I'm going to sing a song. Uh, in my time at Tabor, which was where I went to college, there was this thing called SP&D, Share, Prayer, and Dare. A- and SP&D was uh, this college, uh, it was church for college students by college students at Tabor. A- and We had students or pastors come and give sermons, but what I remember the most is worship. Uh, And one of those worship songs stuck out with me. So in lieu of a closing prayer, uh, I'm going to sing a pretty short song. Uh, And I I realize it talks about, here I am, Lord, tonight. We did this on Wednesday evenings. It's 1140. The time change wasn't uh, quite that drastic. I, I recognize that, but But bear with it because the pre-chorus talks exactly about what I'm talking about today. I cannot do this on my own. I cannot do this all alone. So if, if you pick it up real fast, sing with me. If not, I'll just sing it over us and then we'll go from this space. Go for it, Dan. Myself at your feet, asking you, won't you meet? 
won't you meet me? I cannot do it on my own. I cannot do it all alone. Here I am, Lord, tonight, with my arms open wide. Won't you come inside? Lay myself at your feet, asking you who won't you meet won't you meet me I cannot do it on my own I cannot do it all alone Here I am, Lord, tonight, with my arms open wide. Won't you come inside? Here I am, Lord, tonight, with my arms open wide. Won't you come inside? Lay myself at your feet Asking you, won't you meet? Won't you meet me? Friends, the good news of Jesus, of God, is that we are not alone. Our God does come to meet with you, to meet with us, all of us. So know you are not alone and go depending on God this week. Blessings to you, friends. Take care.